Popular jock's hot crush turned out to be a guy. He kissed him anyway. Hey, back to earth, dude. Henry's deep voice pulled as he kicked me under the table. What? I snapped back, my heart pounding. The teacher's been calling your name all this while, he whispered urgently. What? Uh, y yes, professor? I uttered as I fumbled with my own body to stand up straight. Mr. Johnson, I was going to ask you a question. However, it seems redundant considering you clearly haven't been listening at all. Detention. Yes, professor. I'm sorry, I mumbled, groaning as I sank back into my chair. Psst! Henry called to me silently as he elbowed me. What? I mouthed, not wanting to get into trouble again. Dude, you were totally out of it. What's going on? Henry whispered, his hazel eyes twinkling with curiosity. Nothing, I hissed back, trying to shake off the embarrassment. Just tired, I guess. Henry smirked, glancing over at Sebastian. Yeah, sure. Tired of staring at Sebastian, maybe? Shut up, I muttered, heart rising to my face. I wasn't staring. I, I was just zoned out in his direction. Yeah, right, Henry teased, his curly black hair bouncing as he laughed silently. I rolled my eyes, trying to focus on the lesson, but my gaze kept drifting back to Sebastian. There was something about the way he moved, the way he smiled that made my heart race. I couldn't understand why I felt this way. I had always considered myself straight, yet there was this undeniable pull towards Sebastian. However, how could that be? The rest of the class dragged on with me stealing glances at Sebastian whenever I thought no one was looking. I felt a mix of frustration and confusion. Why did I feel this way about Sebastian? Why couldn't I just ignore it and move on? As the bell finally rang, signaling the end of the period, I gathered my things, trying to avoid Henry's knowing gaze. Hey, want to grab lunch? Henry asked, falling into step beside me. I nodded in agreement, happy for the distraction. We headed to the cafeteria and joined our usual group. I tried to focus on the conversation around us, but my thoughts kept drifting back to Sebastian. So, what's up with you and Sebastian? Henry asked as we sat down. There's nothing going on, I said, biting into my sandwich. Why do you keep asking? Because it's obvious, man. You've been staring at him for weeks. Just admit it, you've got a crush on him, Henry said, grinning. My heart skipped a beat at the word crush. I laughed it off. You're nuts. I just mess with him for fun, nothing more. Whatever you say, Henry said, raising his hands. But I see how you look at him. Panic hit me. Was it that obvious? I glanced around, but no one seemed to notice. I took a deep breath. And how exactly do I look at him, trying to hide my feelings? I'll tell you what, you seem to have lost your mind completely. Don't you remember I'm straight? I've only had girlfriends before, remember? If you say... I'm just saying that it's possible that you might not be as straight as you think, Henry said, his hands up in surrender. It's okay to be confused. I didn't answer, staring at my tray. The thought had crossed my mind, but I pushed it away. I couldn't be into guys, but the more I thought about it, the harder it was to deny what I felt for Sebastian. The next day, schools were never fun for me. I only come here, well, because I have to. So, as I drifted through the boring walls of this school, my eyes fell on the only person who sort of makes up for all of it. He was sitting hunched on a diary by his locker, his blonde hair falling on his face, which seemed to be twisted in concentration as he scribbled away in a diary. I crept up behind him as a wicked thought passed through my head. I snatched the diary from his hands. Hey, Seb, what's so top secret that you're hiding it from the world? I called out, waving the diary in front of him. Sebastian's head jerked up, his blue eyes widening in shock. Hey, give that back, Ryan, he squeaked, his voice a mix of panic and frustration. I held the diary just out of his reach, enjoying the way he scrambled to grab it. Come on, Seb, don't be so uptight. What's the big secret here? Seriously, Ryan, this isn't funny, Sebastian said, his cheeks turning a rosy shade. He tried to reach for the diary, but I kept it out of his grasp, smirking as he jumped and stretched. Oh, come on, I teased, dancing just out of his reach. Tell me, are you writing a secret fan fiction or just planning world domination? Sebastian's face turned an even brighter pink. It's none of your business. Just give it back. I took a half step back, holding the diary above my head. Maybe I'm just curious. I mean, you've been scribbling away crazy. It's private, Sebastian protested, a mix of frustration and cuteness in his voice. I'm not sharing it. I laughed, watching him struggle to reach his diary. 
You're terrible at keeping secrets. I can see the panic in your eyes. Sebastian huffed. Stop messing with me. Can't you just leave me alone? But how could I leave him alone? When this has been the closest he had come to me yet. The way he is bobbing on his feet to reach for my hand, his chest touching me every time he jumps, his fingers brushing off my arm, his big eyes intently looking only at me and his lips puckered up in that perfect huffing pout. All right, all right, I said, pretending to surrender. I'll give it back. But what do I get in return? I flashed a teasing smile. But the tiny devil was quick. He put his one foot on mine, jumped a bit higher this time, and quickly snatched the diary back, clutching it to his chest. Nothing! You're a menace! Ouch! You're mean, Seb, I said, feigning hurt. Sebastian rolled his eyes, but couldn't hide his smile. We both started heading toward our next class, and I couldn't help but steal glances at him. There was something about his easy smile and the way he had reacted that made me want to keep teasing him. It was like a game, and I was thoroughly enjoying it. Later that evening. As much as I loved these after-school practice sessions, I hated the sweaty mess they left me looking like. I had just taken a break to catch my breath, leaning against the fence and wisping sweat from my face, when I noticed a figure approaching from the edge of the field. Beautiful. That was the only word that came to my mind. She was really stunning. Her long brown curls bounced with every step and her soft features were adorned by whatever kind of makeup it was. My eyes widened a bit as she drew closer. Hey there, she said, her voice warm and inviting. Sorry to bother you. I'm new around here and could use some help. I took a deep breath trying to compose myself despite the sweat and disheveled look. Hi, um, how can I help you? She smiled, and the way her brown eyes looked like honey in the sun made me feel at ease. I'm trying to find an address nearby, but I'm a bit lost. Could you help me out? I glanced at her phone, where the addresses were displayed. Sure, I know where that is. It's not too far from here. I can walk you there if you'd like. Her face lit up with gratitude. That would be wonderful, thank you. As we started walking together, I tried to make small talk to ease the awkwardness of meeting a stranger. So, you're new here? What brings you to our little corner, I asked, trying to sound friendly. She nodded, her curls bouncing. Yeah, just moved in. I'm Alice. Nice to meet you, Alice. I'm Ryan, I said, offering my hand, which she shook with a warm smile. As we walked, the nerves began to fade. How's the area treating you? Alice smiled thoughtfully. It's actually been great. Moving to a new place after going through a transition like I have is always easier. The people seem friendly and the neighborhood has a nice vibe. I'm still adjusting, though, to, um, well, both the new me and the area. I know how that goes, I said with a chuckle. When I first started high school, it felt like a whole new world. It took me a while to get used to everything, specifically avoiding the transitioning part. I didn't want things to get awkward between us. Alice laughed, a sound that was both melodic and genuine. Yeah, moving can be overwhelming, but I'm managing. So, what do you like to do for fun, I asked, hoping to keep the conversation going. Any hobbies? Alice's face lit up. I'm into photography. I love capturing moments and exploring new places, also trying different foods. Photography, that's awesome, I said, intrigued. If you need recommendations for food or things to do, I'm your guy. Alice's smile was warm. I'll keep that in mind. I'm always looking for suggestions. We arrived at the building she was looking for. Here we are. That's your place. Alice looked at the building, then back at me, smiling gratefully. Thanks, Ryan. You've been a big help. No problem, I said, feeling a bit shy, but please. It was nice talking with you. Alice's eyes sparkled with warmth. I'm glad to hear that. I enjoyed it, too. We stood there for a moment, and I can sense that neither of us was quite ready to part ways. So, if you're free sometime, maybe we could hang out, grab a coffee or something? Alice's smile widened. I'd like that. Great, I said, feeling a rush of excitement. Alice took out her phone, and I did the same. We swapped numbers and added each other as contacts. Awesome, she said, typing something into her phone. I'll text you later, and we can pick a date. I'm looking forward to it, I said, handing her my phone back. And if you need anything else or have any questions about the area, don't hesitate to ask. Alice smiled warmly. Will do. Thanks again for everything, Ryan. No problem at all, I said, feeling a bit shy but excited. I'll see you around then. As she walked towards the entrance of the building, I couldn't help but watch her go. There was something magnetic about her presence, and I found myself looking forward to our next meeting. 
The day had turned out to be unexpectedly enjoyable, and I was eager to see what else might come from this new connection. A few weeks later, the past couple weeks of my life feel right out of a movie. Between hanging out with Sebastian at school and spending time with Alice outside of it, my days were full and exciting. Sebastian and I had grown closer in a somewhat awkward and teasing manner. Closer still, I often find myself looking forward to our interactions, whether it is bantering in the hallways or sharing a laugh during lunch. His presence had a way of making me feel both nervous and exhilarated. Alice, on the other hand, had become a comforting constant in my life. Our walks and talks had become a regular thing, and I felt a genuine connection with her. She was beautiful, confident, and understanding, and I couldn't deny the attraction I felt towards her. Her openness about her transition had only deepened my respect and admiration for her. I was happily lost in my thoughts remembering how Alice had smiled at me yesterday or how Seb waited for me outside school so that we could go in together when Henry brought me back to the boring class with his annoyingly happy voice. Where are you looking? Henry said, smirking as he sat down across from me. Huh? I asked, shaking off my daze. Henry followed my gaze and raised an eyebrow. You've been staring at Seb for a while now. Got something on your mind? I rolled my eyes and laughed, trying to play it cool. Nah, just spacing out. What's up? Henry leaned back in his chair, crossing his arms. So how's everything going with Alice? You two got any closer these past days? Making a cringe kissing faces with his hands. Eh, what is wrong with you, dude? I groaned, but I felt a smile tug at my lips. Things are going great with Alice. She's amazing. I think she might be into me too. Henry nodded thoughtfully. And what about you? Are you into her? I hesitated, looking down at my hands. Sort of. I mean, she's beautiful, smart, and really fun to be around. Henry studied me for a moment before leaning forward. And what about Seb? I looked up sharply, my heart pounding. What about him? Henry gave me a knowing look. Deny it all you want, but you feel something for him too, don't you? I opened my mouth to protest, but the words wouldn't come. Instead, I just sat there, feeling exposed and confused. Henry sighed and stood up, patting my shoulder. Look, Ryan. I'm not trying to make things harder for you. I just want you to be honest with yourself. Figure out what you really want. With that, he walked away, leaving me alone with my thoughts. I glanced back at Sebastian, who was now packing up his things. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions, and I couldn't deny that Henry was right. I did feel something for Seb, something I couldn't quite explain. The rest of the day went by in a blur. I tried to balance my time and thoughts between Alice and Sebastian, but the more I did, the more conflicted I felt. Why did Henry have to mess with my head like that? As much as I hated Henry for it, I knew he was right. It was high time. I had made up my mind. But what's on my mind? A better question would be, who's on my mind and in my heart? Who do I like, Sebastian or Alice? Three days later, my mind feels like a fish market. I have been constantly weighing my emotions in my mind these past few days, yet I haven't been able to reach any conclusion. Thankfully, Alice arrived quickly to save me from my mental torture, so I thought. Hey Ryan, she said, her voice soft in contrast to the harsh tug of war in my head. Hey Alice, I replied, managing a smile despite the turmoil inside me. What brings you here? She shrugged, sitting down beside me. I just wanted to see you, thought maybe we could hang out for a bit. Sure, sounds good, I said, trying to keep my tone light. We chatted for a while about school, life, and the usual stuff, but there was an underlying tension in the air, a sense that something more was about to happen. Alice seemed a bit nervous, her eyes darting around as if searching for the right words. Finally, she took a deep breath and turned to face me fully. Ryan, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. My heart started to race and I swallowed hard. What is it, Alice? She looked down at her hands, then back up at me, her expression serious. I really like you, Ryan. I felt this way for a while now, and I just needed to let you know. I felt a rush of emotions, flattered, confused, and a bit panicked all at once. Alice, I... I don't know what to say. She moved a little closer, her eyes searching mine. Do you feel the same way? Do you like me too? I took a deep breath, my mind racing. I think I do, Alice. I mean, you're amazing, and I love spending time with you. A small smile played on her lips as she leaned in, her face barely inches from mine. My heart pounded in my chest, and I felt a wave of panic. I wanted to reciprocate, to lean in and kiss her, but something held me back. I hesitated, my mind flashing with images of Sebastian and the confusing feelings I had for him. I, 
I'm sorry, Alice, I stammered, pulling back slightly. I'm just... I'm not sure. Alice's smile faded, replaced by a look of hurt and confusion. Ryan, do you not like me? No, no, it's not that, I said quickly, feeling a lump form in my throat. I do like you, I mean, I think I do, but I'm just so confused right now. She looked at me for a long moment, her eyes searching mine for answers. Ryan, what's going on? I took a shaky breath, feeling tears prick at the corners of my eyes. It's just, there's so much going on in my head, I don't know what I feel, and it's tearing me apart. She took a step towards with, I'm sure, with the intention of comforting me, yet it scared something in me. I just barked an apology and ran away from there as fast as I could. Was this the answer I was looking for all along? Nah, it couldn't be. It was just... I was just surprised, right? The next day. I like swimming since I was a child. My dad used to take me to the lake when I was a kid and taught me how to make waves with my friend, and they'd help me swim in any water. We had been swimming for PE today, of course. I was excited, but it didn't have anything to do with my love for water. Me and Sebastian were both in the locker room changing into our swim trunks. I stole glances at him, trying not to be obvious, but it was hard not to notice how lean his body moved with effortless grace. Hey Ryan, you ready? Henry called out, snapping me out of my thoughts. Yeah, just a sec, I replied, quickly finishing up. We headed out to the pool, and I couldn't help but watch Sebastian as he moved through the water with smooth, powerful strokes. I joined in, trying to focus on my own swimming, but my thoughts kept drifting back to him. I had this unexplainable yearning to be close to him. I wanted the whole class to disappear, leaving just the two of us. As luck would have it, after swimming, we were both the last two left in the locker room. Inside the locker room, the atmosphere was quiet and a bit tense. I found myself standing near him as he dried off, unable to tear my eyes away. The urge to be closer to him grew stronger, and before I knew it, I was moving towards him. Sebastian, I said my voice low. He looked up a curious expression on his face. Yeah? I stepped closer, feeling the heat between us. I just... I need to ask you something. What is it? He asked, his blue eyes searching mine. I reached out and gently touched a scar on the upper left corner of his chest. It was small but noticeable. How did you get this? Sebastian glanced down at the scar, then back up at me. Oh, that? It's nothing major. I had surgery when I was a kid. I felt a strange mix of emotions, concern, curiosity, and something deeper. Without thinking, I leaned in and planted a soft kiss on the scar. Sebastian gasped, his eyes widening in surprise. Ryan, what are you doing? He whispered, his voice trembling. I, I don't know, I admitted, pulling back slightly. I just... I can't help it. I like being close to you. His expression softened, and he blurted out, I like you too, Ryan. My heart skipped a beat, and I was about to say something when we were interrupted by the sound of footsteps. Henry appeared around the corner, looking awkward and apologetic. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but the teacher is looking for you guys, he said, glancing between us. Sebastian took advantage of the distraction, quickly pushing past me and hurrying out of the locker room. I watched him go, my mind racing with everything that had just happened. Thanks, Henry, I said in a clearly annoyed voice. No problem, he grinned, giving me a knowing look, but soon grew concerned as he saw the look on my face. You okay, man? I don't know, I said honestly. I think I need some time to figure things out. Henry nodded, clapping me on the shoulder. Take your time, just be honest with yourself, and with them. As I headed out of the locker room, I couldn't stop thinking about the moment with Sebastian, the intensity of it all. The way he had looked at me and the words he had said. I knew things were about to get a lot more complicated, but for the first time, I felt like I was starting to understand my feelings. I just didn't know if I had it in me to accept them. I mean, how could a straight man ever be with a gay guy? Five days later. It had been days since I saw either of them. Though it was difficult and I felt a bit lonely, I believe it was for the best. It gave me the much needed time I needed to sort my feelings out. I was getting ready as Henry sat on my bed looking at me. Come on, man, quit giving me the hard pass. Just tell me, who do you like? He whines, clearly frustrated at my silence on the topic. The one you see me with after today will be my lover, I said, enjoying his frustration. I picked up the lilies and started to head out. When Henry shouted, tell me who you are going to see. I simply said, Alice, and walked out the door. About an hour later, I'd been anxious about this conversation for days, and now it was finally happening. I found Alice on a park bench, her face a mix of hope and curiosity. Hey Alice, I said sitting down beside her. 
Thanks for meeting me. Of course, Ryan, she smiled, though her curiosity was clear. What's up? I took a deep breath. Alice, I've been thinking a lot about us. I feel like we have a real connection, and I like hanging out with you and spending time with you. Her face lit up. I've been hoping you'd say that. I like you too. I took another deep breath. But there's something else. I've been seeing someone else. Sebastian, a guy in my class. I've been trying to figure out my feelings, and I think I have strong feelings for him. Alice's smile faded. Sebastian? A guy? Yeah, I said, feeling a mix of relief and anxiety. I want to ask him out today. Alice looked surprised, but then softened. I didn't expect you to be into guys, but I'm glad you're being honest with yourself. I hope things work out with him. Thanks, Alice, I said, feeling a pang of guilt. I really appreciate you being so understanding. We both stood up, and I gave her a hug. It was meant to be a warm, comforting gesture, but as we embraced, I felt the strap of her dress snagged on a button of my shirt. I heard a soft rip as the strap came loose. Oh, I'm so sorry, I said quickly, stepping back and looking at the damage. I didn't mean to. As I glanced down at the exposed area of her upper chest, my heart sank. There, just like on Sebastian's chest, was a scar, exactly the same. It was a small but noticeable mark that I couldn't ignore. Alice, wait a second, I said, my voice trembling. How did you... It all happened suddenly. Alice pulled the strap, covered herself, and tried to run. I held her back with her hand and pulled her close to me. I could once again clearly see the scar. There was no mistaking it. I had touched it, kissed it. How do you have the same scar as him? I mumbled, my voice sounding foreign to my own ears. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I never expected things to go so far, Alice broke down. The realization hit me like a brick. Alice was Sebastian. The guy I had been trying to figure out my feelings for was the same person who had been pretending to be someone else. Why? I asked, my voice breaking. How could you do this? Why would you, why would you pretend to be someone else? Sebastian's face fell, and he tried to explain, his voice shaking. Ryan, I didn't know how to tell you. I wanted to be close to you, and I thought if I showed you a different side of me, you might like me more. You lied to me, I shouted, the anger rising in my chest. You made me think I was falling for someone else when it was you all along. I didn't mean to hurt you, Sebastian said, his eyes filling with tears. I just didn't know how to handle my feelings. This isn't about handling feelings, I yelled. It's about trust. You betrayed me by pretending to be someone else. How could you think this was okay? Sebastian's shoulders slumped and he looked down at the ground. I'm really sorry, Ryan. I didn't know how else to approach this. I just wanted to be close to you. No, I said, shaking my head. You deceived me. You made me believe something that wasn't true. I can't just forget that. I turned away from her, feeling a wave of hurt and anger crashing over me. I couldn't believe I had been fooled like this. I needed to get away to clear my head and make sense of everything. My heart was pounding and I felt a mix of rage and sadness. How could I have been so blind? All this time I had been feeling conflicted between my feelings for Sebastian and Alice only to find out that they were the same person. It was like a cruel joke. Ryan, please, Sebastian called out crying, but I didn't stop. Please stop, I love you. I could be anyone for you, just please don't go. I wanted to get as far away from him as possible. That was until I heard the crash. I turned around as the sound of a crash echoed through the quiet streets. My heart leaped into my throat and the sight before me was a nightmare. Sebastian was lying on the ground, blood pooling around him. His face was pale and his eyes were closed. A car had screeched to a stop nearby and the driver was now standing there looking horrified. No, 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 I screamed, stumbling forward. My hands were shaking uncontrollably as I dropped to my knees beside Sebastian. The world around me felt like it was spinning out of control. Sebastian, I yelled, my voice cracking. I reached out, carefully touching his shoulder, desperate for any sign of life. Sebastian, wake up. He didn't move. My heart raced faster and I felt a wave of fear and helplessness crash over me. I had to do something. I couldn't just sit here. Someone please help, I shouted, looking around wildly. Call an ambulance, please, someone help us. People started to gather around, their faces full of concern and confusion. The driver of the car was on the phone, likely calling for emergency services. I could hear sirens in the distance, but it felt like they were miles away. I turned my attention back to Sebastian, his breathing shallow and uneven. I tried to remember the basic first aid I learned in school. I placed a hand on his neck, feeling for a pulse. It was there, but weak. Come on, Sebastian, stay with me, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Tears were streaming down my face now, mingling with the blood on the ground. 
You can't leave me, not now. The sirens grew louder, and within minutes, an ambulance arrived. Paramedics rushed over, their expressions focused and serious. They carefully assessed Sebastian's condition, and one of them began speaking to me. Who are you to him? The paramedic asked, glancing up at me. I... I'm his friend, I stammered. I don't know what happened. I just heard the crash and came back. The paramedics nodded, turning their attention back to Sebastian. They worked quickly and efficiently, securing him on a stretcher and preparing to transport him. I felt a surge of desperation as they wheeled him towards the ambulance. I'm coming with him, I called out, trying to follow as they loaded him into the vehicle. Two weeks later. Fourteen days had passed since the accident. The waiting room had become my second home. The sterile smell of the hospital had a constant reminder of how fragile life could be. Every day I'd sit by Sebastian's bedside, praying for him to wake up. The pain of seeing him like this was unbearable. Sebastian was still unconscious, his face pale and bruised, connected to various machines that beeped rhythmically. My heart ached every time I looked at him, but I refused to leave his side. I took a deep breath and began to speak, my voice trembling. Sebastian, I don't know if you can hear me, but I need you to know how I feel. I love you. I know things were complicated and we had so much to figure out, but I can't imagine my life without you. I'm sorry for everything. I should have been more honest with myself and with you. Tears streamed down my face as I continued. I'd do anything for you to get better. I'd give up anything, go through anything, just to have you back. Please, just wake up. I need you. I squeezed his hand gently, feeling the faint warmth of his skin. The room seemed to hold its breath as I spoke, the silence heavy with my anguish. To my astonishment, I noticed a slight movement. Sebastian's eyes fluttered open, and he looked at me with a weak but earnest expression. His voice was barely more than a whisper, but it was clear. Ryan, he said, his voice hoarse, if I could turn into a woman for you. I blinked momentarily, stunned by his words. What? He tried to smile, though it was evident he was still in pain. If I could turn into a woman for you, healing from these wounds would be nothing. I'd do it if it meant I'd have a chance with you. This was sudden. I was happy and relieved that he was okay, but his betrayal wasn't something I could just forget. You heal first as soon as possible, and I promise I'll think about it. Three weeks later. You know, you can't keep ignoring him forever, chuckles Henry, as we both see Seb enter the class. He was discharged about a week ago and joined the school back three days ago. As much happy as I've been with his return, I haven't been able to talk to him and have been ignoring him since. I know, I sighed. I don't want to. I just don't know how to talk to him after everything that has happened. Still, you gotta do it sometime. The earlier the better, before any misunderstandings mess these things up. I knew Henry was right. I knew Seb had been mistaking my fear as my anger. I could see it in his eyes every time he tried to talk to me, but how do you go on talking normally to someone who not only catfished you, but also made you question your entire existence? Maybe this is what I was mad about. He was, and is, my gay awakening. Before him, I could have never imagined myself gay, and he had to let me experience these feelings in the worst way possible. Later that afternoon, Everyone had left the classroom, I stayed behind trying to catch up on some assignments. The silence was almost comforting, a brief escape from the chaos in my mind. I was so engrossed in my work that I didn't notice Sebastian approaching until he was right next to my desk. Hey Ryan, he said softly, his voice tentative. I looked up, my heart skipping a beat. Seeing him standing there looking vulnerable and unsure stirred something inside me, but I quickly masked my emotions, not wanting to give away how conflicted I felt. Hey, I replied, my tone neutral. Sebastian placed a small box on my desk. I glanced at it confused. What's this? He took a deep breath as if gathering his courage. It's a limited edition video game. I bought it for you when we were friends, but I never got the chance to give it to you. I stared at the box, feeling a mix of surprise and confusion. Why was he giving me this now? Before I could say anything, Sebastian continued. I know things are complicated between us, he said, his voice wavering slightly. But I wanted you to have this. It belongs to you, even if nothing can ever happen between us. He turned to leave, and something inside me snapped. I couldn't let him walk away. Not like this. Without thinking, I stood up and grabbed his arm, pulling him into a tight hug from behind. Sebastian, I whispered in his ear, my voice thick with emotion. I never said nothing could happen between us. He stirred, clearly taken aback. Ryan, what are you- I held him tighter, more as I did. I was a happy straight man before you brought these new feelings in me. Are you going to leave without taking any responsibility? Sebastian turned slightly, just enough to look at me over his shoulder. 
His eyes were wide, searching mine for any hint of deception. But after everything, I thought you hated me. I shook my head, feeling tears prick at the corners of my eyes. I was hurt and confused, but seeing you like this, knowing how much you care, I can't deny what I feel anymore. I'm still a bit hurt, but I love you, Sebastian. I'm willing to give us a chance. Sebastian turned fully in my arms, facing me. His eyes were shimmering with unshed tears, but there was a glimmer of hope in them. Do you really mean that? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. I nodded, my own eyes filling with tears. Yes, I mean it. I want to try. I want to see where this goes. I pulled him into a tighter hug, feeling the warmth of his body against mine. For the first time in weeks, a sense of peace washed over me. We had a long road ahead, but for now, we had each other, and that was enough. As we stood there holding each other, I couldn't help but think about how far we'd come, from teasing and misunderstandings to this moment of raw honesty and vulnerability. It was a new beginning, and I was ready to embrace it with Sebastian by my side. I never expected things to be easy, after all. I had this whole new side of me to explore. Yet, I knew that my feelings for him were strong enough, and that, with each other's support, we'd be able to overcome anything. So I was ready to face it all because I knew it would be worth it. After all, despite everything, I love Sebastian, and I was willing to fight for him. For us. The End Can you forgive someone's betrayal for love? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force, and stay wholesome.